Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Sarah and welcome to this month's UX Research Functional Group update. So since the quiz format was well received in my last update, we're going to play again this month. The rules of how to play are available on this slide. Uh, for those of you who haven't played before, after each of my questions, I'd like you to try and guess what the answer was. And you can do this by entering your guess into the chat window. You can only guess once and you must have entered your guess by the time I finish my countdown. And it's totally up to you whether you trust the rest of the UX team. Sometimes they'll tell the truth, sometimes they won't. It's up to you to decide when you think they're being honest. Okay, so question number one. So I've spent a lot of my time over the last few weeks interviewing candidates for the UX researcher role. And this is the first time I've actually conducted interviews for recruitment purposes at GitLab. So it's been a really interesting experience for me. And um, I'm really excited at the prospects of another UX researcher uh, joining GitLab. So how many people have I spoken to? I can see answers are coming in. You have three seconds. Two seconds. Oh my, gotta, gotta be more answers than that. Oh, here we go. One second. <laughs> done, done, time's up. If you said C, 17, you'd be correct. I've spoken to 17 candidates. And I'd like to give a quick shout out to the People Ops team for finding me some great people to talk to. So question number two. Uh, so this is an illustration of our new persona and he is responsible for managing and maintaining his company's GitLab installation. But what are his pain points? Okay, you've got three seconds left to answer, two seconds left to answer, and one. So the answer is E, all of the above. <laughs> so why are these pain points? Uh, so this persona actually introduced their company to GitLab, and subsequently they're now responsible for managing and maintaining their company's installation. Um, basically, they're the go-to person for anything GitLab related. However, they do this in addition to their day job. They're typically an engineer who has taken on some added responsibility. And the problem with this is that they don't always have a lot of free time to update GitLab or configure it. So they fall behind with updates uh, because they can't keep up with the frequency at what GitLab releases at. And also because they're not a sysadmin, they're sometimes not very confident in how they've set things up. So processes like automatic updates, creating a backup and so on, they're worried that their setup isn't secure or as efficient as it could be. And we can help them with more tutorials and guidance in the areas that they're struggling in. Another common suggestion is the ability to trigger these processes from within GitLab's interface. Um, and this persona is also responsible for onboarding new users to GitLab. So they've got a lot on their plate. Uh, they really want their colleagues to adopt GitLab but again, they're struggling to find the time to demonstrate GitLab's extensive features to them. So if their colleagues can't understand the benefits of using GitLab and the impact that it will have on their workflow, then it ultimately slows down adoption. And we can alleviate this problem with things like a walkthrough when users log into GitLab for the first time. And my next question. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of background before you answer the last two questions. Uh, so I conducted a card sort with some of our users. And a card sort is a research method used to help organize the information architecture of a product. And basically each user got a set of virtual cards and on each of these cards there was a piece of content from the sidebar. So for example, one card had tags written on it and another card had pipelines written on it. And users were asked to organize the cards into categories that made sense to them and they could create as many categories as they wanted. And the second step was to then label those categories and they could call them anything they wanted them to. And when you analyze a card sort, you're looking for common patterns. Uh, you're looking for when people organize and label a group of cards in the same way. You can then apply that structure to your information architecture. Now for this question, users organize cards into a new category that we don't currently have in our sidebar at a project level. And they gave it one of the headings detailed on the slide. So which one was it? Okay, we have three seconds. 
three seconds to answer. One second. Okay, if you said A, wiki, you would be incorrect. Wiki is actually a category which already exists, thank you Annabelle, and you can add it to your sidebar by changing your project settings. If you said C, insights, you would also be incorrect. Insights is a navigation item within GitHub's interface. It was actually B, statistics. 58% of users who took part in the car so it was like a new category called statistics added to the sidebar. And some of the items they would like to see within this category include activity, cycle analytics, contributors, members, and charts. So my last question for today. So what happens when users are confused by a piece of content? Well, you end up with less common patterns and more unique categorizations of that card. So are the content on the slide which received the highest number of unique categorizations? Three, two, one. If you said A, tags, you'd be wrong. If you said B, snippets, you'd be right. So snippets had a whopping 48 unique categorizations. So that's 67% of people that categorize snippets differently to one another. So why is this? So, well, the category headings people used actually gave us some insight into this, and I'm going to read a couple to you. I don't know. I don't know. No idea. Ambiguous. It's useless. Do not use. Rarely used. Now, users could access a brief summary of what a snippet is from the card description, so we can safely assume that they have a basic understanding of what a snippet is. So it's not the terminology we're using to describe the content. It's just as simple as that they have no idea to where, where to put it. And that's possibly because they're not using the feature. So for a future study, we need to dig a bit more into why they're not using snippets. So that's all my questions for today. Thank you for taking part. My next quiz will be in the new year and I'll be introducing some prizes for taking part in the functional group update. So stay tuned, come back next year and please take part. In terms of what I'm working on at the moment, um, I'm currently writing a blog post into the kinds of research that we do at GitLab. Um, I'm also doing some research into how issues are sorted on the board view and how they're visually displayed across GitLab and the kind of things that users need to see on an issues board versus a list view. And I'm also hoping to expand our personas even further. Um, I'd like to include a, a non-technical person. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Sarah, um, are you considering broadening the research uh, beyond just the interface of GitLab, but also researching the installation, the updating, the onboarding, uh, getting a trial, stuff like that? Definitely. I would definitely love to do that. I, I definitely think from what we've seen a lot of the time, like we touched on with this persona, such as onboarding new users and having walkthroughs and things like that, I, it, that is something that I would love to be involved in, yeah. Cool, yeah, that seems a, a good middle ground to start the onboarding of new users. Cool, any last questions? Great, well, thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for the game.